everybody, I'm Martin. And I'm Leanne. Welcome to Cancer Connect. Hello everyone and welcome to Kamsa Connect, a Sunday worship service brought to you by the Cambridge Citadel Salvation Army family. We're a church that believes everyone is welcome, nobody is perfect and anything is possible. So we're glad that you're here today. We definitely are. Well, in today's episode called Travelling Light, uh, we're exploring that we don't need lots of stuff, for example, our own comfort, our own security, to be the people that Jesus wants us to be. We just need to trust and have faith in him and let him equip us for the task. So what then have we got for you today? Well, we've got our singing company, that's our junior choir, and songs from the Salvation Army in the southern United States. Yeah, and we'll be celebrating Founders Day too, which we commemorated this week on the 2nd of July. Uh, that's the birth date of the Salvation Army. So the Salvation Army was born 155 years ago. Wow, amazing. Oh, and don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell icon if you want to be notified when our videos are published. First though, Many of you will have heard the news this week that the Salvation Army lost one of its most prominent and influential musicians. That's right. Lieutenant Colonel Norman Beercroft was promoted to glory a week ago, age 94. So for our opening song today, we thought we'd go back to the video archives and have Norman conduct us all in one of his own arrangements. Here he is to lead us in Charles Wesley's great hymn of the church, Oh for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Thank you. 
Thanks for that good seeing everybody and thank you, Colonel Bearcroft. So as our episode today is about Jesus' instructions to his disciples to travel light to us too, it causes us to think about the fact that we do carry an awful lot of baggage with us in life. And that baggage, whether the burden of past relationships, concerns we have now about family, health or finance, or worries about the future can all weigh us down as we go about our lives each day. That's right. So in our worship at Cambridge Salvation Army, we regularly come before God in prayer, not just because we need his help to carry all this stuff, but sometimes to say sorry to him for carrying it ourselves and not entrusting it to him. So we're going to share in a prayer together and in a few moments join in the singing of a song which asks God to search us, examine us and see if there's anything in our lives which is getting in the way of our relationship with Jesus. So then, let's go to Obadiah and then Francesca as they lead us in prayer. And after that, we'll sing the song, Search Me, O God, and Know My Heart Today. Let's pray. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Daddy, I thank you for enabling me, Martin and Leah, to keep this church together during this time of quarantine. I hope those who lost their loved ones during this pandemic find rest and peace beyond their understanding. I thank you for clearing the coronavirus so that the children can go back to school in September. I hope that you will help us to love one another as you loved us. I hope that you will return soon. In Jesus' name I pray, Amen. Dear Lord, I thank you that over this time of restriction, you've given us opportunities to reflect on what is most important. You know our needs far better than we do. Help us to value what you value and refocus our hearts that we may be in alignment with you. I ask, Lord, that you would equip us as individuals for the challenges that we'll be facing in our personal lives. That you would equip us as a church as we look towards the building project and plans for reuniting over the coming months. Please give us the patience that we'll need for this. I ask that you would equip our country as we come out of lockdown Help us to adapt to the changes we will face, but but to continue to show consideration and love for each other. I ask, Lord, that you would be with our leaders, that you would give them wisdom and help them to listen for your guidance. May we trust in you now and always, Lord. I ask these things in your name. Amen.
Thank you for joining with us in our prayer time. We are constantly encouraged by the number of views we receive for CAMSA Connect, both live and by later catch up. And we hope that whenever you manage to watch it, you receive much blessing. Here are our planned events for the week. On this same video channel during the week, you will find two videos on Tuesday at 8 p.m. Brass Reflections. Please tune in again this week to find out who is presenting their favourite choice of music. Then on Wednesday at 7pm, Prayer Matters. Wednesday at 8pm, CAMSA Connect Sings continues in its usual format, and this week will feature songs that have been chosen by Chloe, who is part of our Songsters leadership team. Thursday at 7pm, our Bible study session will continue, even although the recent study of Hebrews has now concluded. But join us again this week to discover our next study topic. As I mentioned last week, due to current coronavirus restrictions on how we are able to worship, we at Cambridge will not be meeting again until 6th of September at the earliest. This is a provisional date for the time being. However, I am pleased to advise that our charity shop staff are now actively planning how to make our shop safe for both customers and staff. Our community response programme recommenced last week and is planned to continue until the end of July. The financial support for this via our Just Giving page has now reached almost 75% of our £10,000 target. We are grateful to those who donate and also to those who make this Just Giving page widely known. Prayer leaflets for July were posted during the past week. If you have not yet received yours, please get in contact with our officers. A reminder too, if you haven't done so already, to send cheques to Karen for your combined collection and cartridge for last month. By reference to our officers update number 22, you will find important news about our core folk, their achievements and prayer needs. Regarding achievements, we congratulate Emma, who has now graduated and is very pleased with the result of her hard work. Well done, Emma. I wonder how many of you realised or remembered that it was Founders Day last Friday. If you missed it, for your enjoyment and information, here is a modern version of William Booth's well-known I'll Fight speech. While people quarantine as they do now, I can. While unemployment is rife and hunger beckons as it does now, I'll nourish. While there is a single lonely person, while there is a survivor of domestic violence, while there remains one man, woman or child troubled by disaster or injustice. I'll pray. I'll give. I will heal. I learn. I'll support. I'll speak out. I'll not give up. I will never turn away. Я буду руками та ногами Иисуса. And I'll fight. And I'll fight. And I'll fight. 
And I'll fight. I'll fight. And I'll fight. We'll fight. fight to the very end. Together. Thanks, Norman, for the update, and Obadiah and Francesca for your prayers too. The Salvation Army is an amazing movement. Being here in Cambridge, most of the time we don't always see or appreciate how extensive its work is around the world and how much it is growing and actually has never stopped growing since 1865. Yeah, that's right. And back in 2009, um, Phil Lager and Marty Michaels, Salvationists in America South, penned a song called Soldier's Hymn. Uh, it's the melody we've been hearing in that video, actually. And it's a contemporary reminder to the worldwide Salvation Army that we should be the people Booth envisioned we should be. So in a moment, we're going to share in our weekly scripture reading. But first, as we celebrate 155 years of the Salvation Army, we invite you to join with us in singing that song. Here are members of the Salvation Army Southern Territory in the United States to lead us in Soldier's Hymn. What shall we do? And take ourselves by singing a hymn, offering a prayer, or giving a little good advice? No, ten thousand times no. We will treat them, beat them, reclaim them, employ them. Perhaps we shall fail with many, quite likely, but our business is to help them all the same. So let us aim to the rescue. Oh, Company will lend a hand. Father of this army, Captain of our soldiers, may your glory fill the earth as this world grows colder. May your troops be bolder. We fight with only love. May the crosses we Yeah. 
as we await you. Jesus went through all the towns and villages, teaching in the synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness. He called his twelve disciples to him and gave them authority to drive out evil and to heal every disease and sickness. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach his message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons, freely you have received, freely give. Do not take along any gold or silver or copper in your belts. Take no bag for the journey or extra tunic or sandals or a staff for the worker is worth his keep. Whatever town or village you enter, search for some worthy person there and stay at his house until you leave. As you enter the home, give it your greeting. If the home is deserving, let your peace rest on it. If it is not, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not welcome you or listen to your words, shake the dust off your feet when you leave the home or town. Thanks for bringing that reading to us, Morris. Now, the passage in Matthew's Gospel is really interesting, isn't it? You can well imagine that taking off a big belt or bags off of your back, your tunic, your sandals and putting your staff to one side would leave you feeling much lighter. But I don't think Jesus was on a drive for us to lose some weight though, was he? No, I think it's more about the fact that when you're not so weighed down with things that we think are important to carry around with us, we can lift our heads and see where we're going and we have so much more energy to do God's work. Exactly right. Well, we're glad that uh, as part of our Salvation Army at Cambridge, we have a singing company, a junior choir, and they're here today to sing a song and we'll hear from them in just a moment. First though, children, here's our young people's band leader, Lee, to tell us what he thinks it means to travel light. Hello everyone. How much stuff do you take with you when you go on holiday or a school trip? What type of things do you take? Do you ever take so much stuff that you never need it, like clothes you don't wear or an extra book that you didn't get round to reading? It's just as well that we don't have compact disc players or portable DVD players. We can listen to or watch or read things on our mobile phones these days. I can imagine, if you're anything like me, your suitcase would look something like this. If you knew what to take and are a bit organised or had help from a certain someone, it might look like this. But we all need to think, what do we really need and plan carefully? When Jesus sent his disciples on a journey to spread the gospel, he told them not to take anything with them or make arrangements to stay anywhere. Can you imagine going on a journey or holiday without booking a place to stay, without food, clothes or money? The things we take for granted. 
It's not just travelling that we don't need to take lots of stuff, it's life in general. As Christians, we know that Jesus will take care of all our needs and provide us with everything we need for life's journey. We know we can rely on his love for us and know that we can trust in his word always. And that is all we need. If you were to Google, as I did, the words travelling light, you would come up with the following. Travelling light, style that travels well. Travelling light, theatre company. Leonard Cohen, travelling light, official audio. Travelling light by Tove Janssen. And finally, how to travel light, 25 quick swaps for packing light. Now, I don't know about you, but very often I've come to the end of a holiday and find that I have clothes that are never worn, but I've packed them just in case, and then I feel bad because I didn't need them and I'd carried them the whole way to wherever I was going. This story in Matthew is about the disciples travelling light. Jesus has seen the crowds, we were reading um, in Matthew chapter 9, and um, as he has been travelling around on his ministry. And we're told that he has compassion on them because they are like sheep without a shepherd. He can see that they're lost, that they are directionless, that they're seeking. And so he says to the disciples in Matthew chapter 9 that they are to pray for workers, for the harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. And then we get this interesting verse in chapter 10 and verse 9. Do not get any gold or silver or copper to take with you in your belts. No bag for the journey or extra shirt or sandals or a staff, for the worker is worth his keep. 
In other words, he says to the disciples, you are to depend entirely on God for your needs. He will provide for you. However, Jesus isn't unrealistic in what he is sending the disciples out to do. He says to them, yes, there will be those that welcome you, those that will offer you hospitality. But conversely, there will be those who do not welcome you and who are not going to offer their hospitality to you. And it's important to remember that Jesus isn't asking the disciples to do something he hadn't done himself or something he knew he wasn't going to face himself. From the moment of his birth, Jesus was vulnerable. So he knew what it was going to be like when he sent the disciples out there. But the lesson was still rely on God for God will supply your needs. Don't take any baggage with you. God will take care of you. Now, I don't think Jesus is going to ask very many of us to give up all our worldly possessions and head off with nothing other than the clothes on our back to preach the good news. He does ask that of some people and they are asked to go to lands and perhaps even neighbourhoods where they cannot take with them the things that they're used to having around them. But he doesn't ask that of everybody. But there are other things, other lessons to learn from this passage, especially that short verse, uh, verse 9 and verse 10. There are other things that can weigh us down and make us have baggage. Other things that cause us to feel as if we have the weight of the world on our shoulders. Things that can stop our joy and stop us from seeing the blessings from God. Stop us from being the workers in the harvest field. We can feel hurt and fearful and anxious and stressed and uncertain. All these things can cause us to feel weighted down, to feel as if there's no light at the end of the tunnel, to feel as if we would just rather stay in bed than have to get up and face the day before us. And we're living in such an unprecedented time at the moment where this can exacerbate perhaps how we would normally deal with worries and anxiousness when there is so much uncertainty around us that we're wondering about the future and we're wondering about our jobs, our finances, our health. What will normal look like? Will we ever feel normal again? And if we're not careful, that's the sort of things that we focus on and we end up taking our eyes off Jesus. Jesus who gives peace and joy and love. So yes, this passage of scripture is about the commissioning and sending out of the disciples. It's about them learning what it was going to be like to be a follower of Jesus. But for us, it can be a reminder to let go of all of the things that hold us back, all of the things that weigh us down, even all of the sin that so easily entangles us. It's Jesus saying, travel light for I am with you. I will never leave you. You are my child and you are loved. Come to me and lay your burdens down, and I will give you rest. Now, if we were in the army hall at the moment, our church, I would be saying that as we listen to the music you're going to hear, make your response to God by coming and kneeling at our place of prayer, our mercy seat, or perhaps just where you're sat, or getting somebody to pray with you. Well, we're not in our army hall, are we? But where we are right now in our living rooms is holy ground, for God is with us as we have worshipped this morning. So as you listen to the music that you're about to hear, as you hear the words, trust the heart of your Father, when the answer goes beyond what you can see, lift your eyes towards heaven, when the moments on our journey are difficult, bow the knee, know that God is with you. You may want to kneel at your armchair or your settee, or maybe just bow your head and say to Jesus, take it, it's heavy and I don't want to carry this burden anymore. The thing I'm worried about, I give to you. And as you do, may you know the peace that passes all understanding. May you feel a lightness in your spirit as the Spirit of God ministers to you just now.
Let's share in a prayer together. Living Lord, you came and lived among us. You met the fullness of life head on, felt the best and worst of it, touched people in all their extraordinary variety, travelled light and asked us to do likewise. May we follow in your footsteps today and always. Amen. And Amen. Well, it's almost time for us to go. So thanks so much for tuning in today and for joining with us in worship. And thanks to the Cambridge Citadel family for helping us once again. Now then, as we end our worship on a Sunday where we've celebrated the birth of the Salvation Army, we really couldn't finish with any other song than the Founder's Song. So until next time, keep safe, keep well. And keep connected. God God bless bless you. you.